Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at a very new topic. Inspired by the comments from Neural Warp and Kean Math and Sydney. Thank you for your comments and ideas. I wanted to make a video on basic partial differential equations. So I picked some examples that are really basic and I just want to introduce the theory, a little bit of the, you know, notation, not necessarily the theory. And then we'll just go from there. All right, let's get started. So we're going to be looking at some basic partial differential equations today. All right, so first of all, some notation. U is a function of x and y. And we define the partial derivative of u with respect to x. We write it as u sub x as well, which is the notation we're going to use in which y is constant. So when we talk about the partial derivative of u with respect to x, y will be considered a constant. All right? And then just, just like the first one, with respect to y, it's going to be u sub y, and in that case, x is going to be a constant. Okay? Great. So let's go ahead and take a look at the second derivatives. There's a couple different cases we need to look at. This is the second partial derivative of u with respect to x. And then that just means the first derivative and then the derivative of that. And obviously we can write it as u sub xx or however you want to read it, but it's just the second derivative. And the second derivative with respect to y is also going to be the derivative of the derivative. Notice that every time we're differentiating with respect to y. But those are partial derivatives. That's what this symbol means. Whatever that's called. Del, d, partial d, whatever you want to say. Okay, let's look at another situation where the variables are different every time we differentiate. So the second derivative of u with respect to x and then with respect to y. So you got to be careful here because we differentiate here with respect to x first, which is actually the expression that is inside. And when you write it in the u sub form, the x is written first. So they, they're kind of switched around. Notice that it's kind of yx, here it's xy. But this is the type of notation I'd like to use from now on. Okay? And the second case scenario is when they're switched, and there's something interesting about these, like there's a good relationship. u sub yx is basically you differentiate u with respect to y first, and then whatever that is, you differentiate with respect to x. So x is done last, okay? Make sense? Cool, cool. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. So I picked like four basic equations. Hopefully these are going to be uh, easy enough to demonstrate the you know, idea behind solving these kinds of equations. The first one is going to be the partial derivative of u with respect to x or u sub x equals 0. Obviously, when you write it this way, it looks much simpler. So you don't have to go into uh, writing this weird symbol. Anyways, u sub x is equal to 0, and we're supposed to find u. Remember, u is a function of x and y, so it could contain both. How do you solve these kinds of equations? Well, here's what you need to think about. When you differentiate a constant, its derivative is 0. So u must be a constant. But we differentiate it with respect to x. So with respect to x, y is considered a constant. So whenever you have a problem like, okay, d, let's say, df over dx is 0, then you can basically say, hey, f must be a constant like c, right? So similarly, we're going to do the same thing here. But this time we're going to say, hey, u is supposed to be a constant with respect to x, and that would be a function of y. Why? because y is considered a constant. When you differentiate this with respect to x because y is constant, this is going to be 0. Make sense? So what kind of function are we talking about? Any function of y will satisfy this property. And obviously, partial differential equations are hard to solve because there are so many solutions, in some cases very difficult or impossible to solve, but we can come up with some general solutions like this one. So for example, e to the power y would be a solution, a constant like 2 would be a solution, cosine of y over 2 would be a solution, so on and so forth. There are infinitely many solutions as long as they are functions of y. They shouldn't contain x. Make sense? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the second example. Our problems are going to get slightly harder, and at the end, we're going to be doing the problem that's on the thumbnail. 
I know the thumbnail didn't say we're going to be doing partial differential equations in general, but I just wanted to pick the hardest one, or, well, not the hardest, but hardest in this video as a thumb, thumbnail. Okay, now, notice that we have the partial derivative of u with respect to y first, and then with respect to x, and then the answer is 0. So you kind of have to look at the last thing that was done on u. What's that supposed to mean? It means that we can actually integrate this stuff to get back to u, but you have to integrate twice, sort of. So here's what the first integration gives us. When you integrate this with respect to x, because it was differentiated last with respect to x, when you differentiate, when you, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm confusing myself. When you integrate this, u sub y is going to be the integral of 0 with respect to x. And guess what? Just like we've seen in the first example, it is going to be a function of y. Now, if you differentiate this with respect to x, notice that if you do u sub y x, you're going to differentiate this with respect to x, you're going to get 0 because y is a constant. So f of y is also a constant. Make sense? Hopefully it does. But we're not done yet because this is just u sub y and you need to find u. So we, we're going to integrate one more time, but this time we're going to integrate with respect to y because u was differentiated once with respect to y, and so now we have to go back by integrating. If you integrate u sub y with respect to y, you're going to get u, and if you integrate f of y with respect to y, now think about it, you're going to get the integral of f of y, obviously. We don't know what it is, but let's just write it as an integral. And what about the constant? Remember, we always write plus c, and if we don't, a lot of times we'll lose points. It's going to be a constant c, but with respect to y, a constant would be a function of x. Because if you differentiate this, now notice that you can always go back and forth to check your work, and it's very helpful at the beginning if you're new to partial differential equations like me, because I haven't taken any courses, I just kind of explore a little bit and learning new things along the way. So I'm learning with you guys, if you're new to this too. Anyways, our constant will be a function of x, because when you differentiate this with respect to y, the derivative of g of x will be 0, which will give you the in derivative of this, which is f of y. Remember, the derivative of the integral of a function is the, that function. Make sense? But what is the integral of f of y? We don't know what it is. Let's just call it another function of y, and a lot of times we use uppercase f for that, because... That is the standard notation. And obviously, don't forget to add your constant. Again, g of x, in this case, is a constant with respect to y. So the answer is a function of y plus a function of x. If you want to pick a particular example, like you can easily pick something as easy as y plus x. Differentiate this with respect to y first. Y is, um, x is going to be a constant, so the derivative of y plus x with respect to y, and this is good practice, is going to be 1, right, because the integral of, um, I mean, the derivative of y is 1. And then if you differentiate this with respect to x, you're going to get 0. Make sense? So it always checks. That's what's cool about these equations. All right, let's go ahead and look at another problem where we differentiate twice with respect to x. So the second derivative, and remember, we could also write this as d squared, the partial d squared u over partial dx. Make sense? That's the same thing. But we're going to write the subnotation because it's easier. Cool. So we're going to be integrating again, but this time we're going to do it twice with respect to x. First of all, if you integrate this once with respect to x, you, you have a constant. So the derivative of something is constant, which means, sorry, the derivative of something is zero, which means that thing needs to be a constant. With respect to x, constant means a function of y. Don't think of y as a function of x. u is a function of both x and y. So x and y are in equal grounds. So the first integral gave us this. Now we're going to integrate one more time, but how do you integrate with respect to x again? This is kind of like a constant. Think about it. How would you integrate k dx? It will be k times x, right? So the constant multiplier x. Because if you differentiate kx, you get k. Make sense? f of y is a constant. If you integrate it with respect to x, you're going to get f of y times x because f of y is your constant. Make sense? Easy, right? Okay. But this is just the 
u sub x, right? Okay. So actually not u sub x. What am I talking about? This is the this is u because we integrated twice, right? Integrate and integrate. Great. So that should be the answer, right? The answer is no. Because we have one more uh, thing to add, that is the constant. Remember, we integrate with respect to x, so a function of y will be a constant, but we already have a function of y, but that's a, the coefficient of x. We, we need to add another constant. It's kind of like integrating this k, k dx, kx plus c. I forgot to add that in the example. So that's going to be our answer. Let's go ahead and take a look at the fourth one, which is the very last one. Okay, great. So now, if you think about the counterpart, the the ordinary counterpart of this problem, you're going to get something like this. d squared u over dx squared with the ordinary uh, differentials equals u. And then you can basically write this as d squared u over dx squared minus u equals 0. And then we do have something called the, uh, is it auxiliary equation or something like that? So we can kind of write the differential operator like this, the second derivative applied on u minus u itself. And then we can basically write this as a characteristic equation, which is m plus 1 times m minus 1, because this is how it's factored. I mean, uh, the difference of two squares. And we're going to set this characteristic equation equal to 0. And from here, we're going to find m equals negative 1, m equals 1. And then we're going to write our answer as u equals constant times e to the x plus another constant times e to the power of negative x. So these become the coefficient of x in e to the power kx. Make sense? But this is just the ordinary case. Let's go ahead and take a look at the partial case. In the partial case, it's going to be the same thing, except the constants will be replaced with functions of y. So it's going to look like this. U is going to be f of y times e to the x plus another function of y times e to the power of negative x. Why another function? Because those functions need not be the same. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. I hope you liked my first attempt at partial differential equations. Please let me know. Until next time, bye-bye.